Hey, what's happening, everybody? Welcome. Today, we're going to be talking about Bitcoin, cryptocurrency, the state of the economy, and everything else that revolves around this whole thing. It's getting pretty crazy, and I think we have a pretty big catalyst coming for Bitcoin in the next few days, specifically September 22nd, September 23rd. But first, let's take a quick look at coin market cap and see what the Bitcoin price currently is so we're hovering at around ten thousand one hundred and fifty two dollars uh, and yeah, yesterday we had like a drop a significant drop really steep straight down into the toilet and then a few hours later it recovered right back and we kind of just go a little closer here to get a little bit more details so let's do a seven day and um uh, let's do one month and actually you can see that there's this resistance line at around ten thousand four hundred dollars so it's um you know if we could break that ten thousand four hundred dollar uh area then there's a good chance that it's gonna rise and continue on up now if you're a you know day trader obviously you want to look at on uh, look at this on a, as a small scale so you can find the good entry point to make your trades but as a long-term investor you know you don't really want to look at this kind of stuff uh, actually so if you do believe bitcoin one day will reach a massive price then this stuff doesn't matter to you as too much but um it recovered that's where we're at right now so the first thing i want to cover real quick uh as a basic thing in case you have no idea what bitcoin is uh hopefully you do have some knowledge on it let's look at this quick little article from february 11th 2019 so as of December 2018, almost 32 million Bitcoin wallets have been set up globally. So now it's 2019, almost end of 2019. So it should be more than that. Uh, an estimated 5% of Americans hold Bitcoin. There are 7.1 million active Bitcoin users. Uh, the leading exchange is Coinbase. So Coinbase is a platform that allows you to do trades on Bitcoin and several other cryptocurrencies. Um, so that's where we are right now. This number is growing exponentially since its inception in 2009 so a lot of people correlate with this number expanding more people get exposed to bitcoin which causes people to want to invest into it and that drives the price higher so this is a good sign this is really good now what makes people want to you know invest into bitcoin bitcoin think of it as an asset it is an asset a store of value sort of like uh, gold or silver but this is people like to call this uh, gold 2.0 so we live in a society where the internet and technology kind of rules our lives so you can't just go and walk around with a big chunk of gold and buy something um, with Bitcoin you could do that it's right on your smartphone and what's also interesting is uh you know it i think it appeals more to the younger generation the older people it's kind of hard for them to wrap their head around it like there's no value in it it has it has a very secure ledger with the whole bitcoin network running in the background with miners making confirmations on transactions like it's pretty complex and it it really wants to eliminate inflation so bitcoin was originally created because of the crash in 2008 um so the stock market took a crap back then because of the housing market there's only 21 million coins ever going to be you know created so you can see it here 21 max supply while uh, we're at about 17.9 million currently so each day each every 10 minutes more uh, bitcoins are created with this max in the year 2140 so bitcoin's going to be around for a long time even after we die so we're still in the early stages of this whole thing so what i want to do here is look at the uh, the us debt clock.org and take a look at the us national debt so 22.5 trillion dollars like that is insane so we are living in a life of just complete debt like f funny money fake money it's not even real it has no value because they could just con continually print more money whenever they want with bitcoin you're limited to 21 million and that's what makes bitcoin amazing is that we're limited to only 21 million bitcoin in existence you can't print more you can't make more it's all hard-coded you can't change it and not to mention like we currently have 17.9 million floating around currently but you got to remember thousands if not maybe millions i don't know the exact number of bitcoin have actually been lost because people store them on their laptops or their hard drives and then their hard drives crash and they're 
essentially lost forever. You can never recover them. So the final number in the year 2140 is going to be less than this. So I think that really appeals to a lot of people because there's a limited amount. You can't print more like the U.S. government does. So let's just uh, look at this uh, recently. So this happened a few days ago. The U.S. quietly printed $75 billion out of thin air for the banks. This is why Bitcoin matters. So I just want to quickly go over this real quick. So the Federal Reserve Bank of New York very quietly handed out $75 billion in cash to the banks on Wednesday in a process known as a repurchase operation or repo. The emergency measure hasn't been used at scale for a decade since the last financial crisis. So back in 2008, uh, 2007, 2009 and all that. It's a reminder of the central bank's power to artificially expand the money supply and devalue your money. This is why Bitcoin with a cap supply and strict predictable <laughs> strict predictable outputs matters so uh, basically what happened was the interest rates uh, over the US overnight repo rate surged to about 10% so that's too high they don't want that if it stays at this 10% what's gonna happen is a recession is gonna come there's no way for it to survive basically uh, at that high rate so what do they do they printed more money and then the interest rate actually came back down to where they want it uh to about two percent so if they left the rate at ten percent like i was saying it should uh basically make the recession happen so we've been in expansion uh let's just pull up the s p so we've been growing the basically the uh, the stock market has been expanding since the last crash for over 10 years like this is crazy like it's time for a recession to happen so another thing that happened recently actually uh, maybe about a month ago uh, what happened was there was a inverted yield curve so essentially when the inverted yield curve happens it means that the short-term rates are actually higher than the long-term rates so when that happens um, usually usually it signifies that a recession is coming so every time there was an inversion, a recession happens. You can see an inversion here, a recession happens. So we had an inversion here, 2019, and it's possible that and you know a recession is going to happen soon. So when recessions happen, uh, you know the stock market is going to basically come down. Uh, stocks are going to be valued less. More people are taking their money out and uh, they want to put it somewhere else so people want to hold the value of their dollar because technically the dollar is worthless like if you hold the dollar you're losing money on the dollar because of inflation so a lot of people look to gold silver and now we have a new uh asset that exists after the last crash and that's bitcoin so i feel like bitcoin has a really good chance to <laughs> past this $10,000 mark, even up into the $100,000 mark. Remember, this is not financial advice, but if there is a recession coming soon, then I think Bitcoin is going to do really well. Also, gold and silver, precious metals. Um, now, another thing I wanted to cover really quick was, um, so the previous crash, uh, you know, in the last recession, what caused that was the housing market people couldn't afford their homes they were getting mortgages here left and right people were basically going into debt and uh, they crashed the whole thing and also in the last crash there were a few people that actually predicted it before the crash actually happened because nobody would uh, saw that it was coming so people like michael burry this guy here he shorted the market um and there's actually a good movie it's called the big short you should check it out it's pretty awesome it basically explains what happened in the last uh you know in the last crash so are we currently in a bubble so it seems like we are according to michael burry so he predicted the last crash because the housing market was in a bubble and now he's saying the next bubble is basically index funds and ETFs that track the stock market. So let's just quickly go over some of these points here that they uh, mentioned. So passive investments are inflating stock and bond prices in a similar way that collateralized debt obligations did for subprime mortgages more than 10 years ago. Uh, like most bubbles, the longer it goes on, the worse the crash will be. 
The theater keeps getting more crowded, but the exit door is the same as it always was. All of this gets worse, and you get into even less liquid equity and bond markets globally. So essentially, this bubble currently is passive investments, such as, like I said, uh, ETFs and index funds. Now, there are smaller cap stocks that do exist that could potentially be completely undervalued. So uh, there are potential for some stocks to actually do really well if this bubble does burst but i want to stay on the topic of bitcoin so so basically what it seems like if this bubble does burst a lot of people are going to get out of the stock market causing the recession is going to continue going down and now we have bitcoin that exists what is going to happen during a u.s recession so it's it's pretty interesting so a lot of people look at you know the bitcoin stock charts in a linear scale but if you move it to the log scale it gets a little more interesting so uh, we're starting out here in july 2013 we're sitting at 123 dollars look at this jump right here so 900 basically a thousand dollars and then the next one next climb was up to 13 14 thousand actually it went up to 20 thousand and look at this i mean it, <laughs> it, it makes it almost seem as if you know this has a lot more area to move up now i don't really want to look at this chart and say well yeah it could go up it went to twenty thousand here uh you know it could go to a hundred thousand but just looking at this chart it doesn't really mean anything right it's just tracking the price of the coin but if we look at a chart like this it kind of explains in a little bit more detail of what's actually going on so like we were saying earlier there is a limited amount of bitcoin that can ever be created now if you look here in the beginning of bitcoin's existence there were uh, basically 50, 50 Bitcoin created every single 10, every 10 minutes. So miners, people using their computers back then, you could use a CPU to mine because it was the difficulty was very low. Now, as more people start to mine, the difficulty actually goes up and it becomes harder to mine. So it actually becomes more expensive and more um, people are mining. So it, it always has the Bitcoin network always adjusts itself to 10 minutes. So. You, you, the last Bitcoin is going to be mined in the year 2140. It can't be earlier. It can't be later. I mean, I guess it could be later if people stop mining. But if we just look at this chart and the price action when um, this sort of happens. So I didn't really mention it. But so every so often there's a Bitcoin halving. halving. <laughs> so in the beginning, it was 50 Bitcoin every 10 minutes. Then it went down to 25 Bitcoins every 10 minutes in the 2014 to 2016 area. And now 2018 to 2020, it's 12.5 Bitcoin every 10 minutes. So the next halving, which is going to happen 6.25. And then after that, it's going to drop to 3.125 you know, or whatever, half of that. So the supply becomes uh, more minimal. And what happens with the price? It seems as if every time there's a cut in the Bitcoin supply, people want to buy more and the price goes up higher and higher. And if you just go back to um, the Bitcoin chart here again, I just want to look at the market cap. So basically, this is how much money is actually in Bitcoin. And back in 2013, we're looking at $1.5 billion in Bitcoin. And then at the peak, when the price was $20,000, we are looking at uh, $313 billion in Bitcoin itself. So we're currently at about $100 uh 85 billion which is good uh but i feel like there's still a lot more money that can be pumped into this now before i get to the last part uh, which is basically the whole point of this video uh, i just want to talk about one last thing so remember i was saying more millennials or younger people are more uh, I think more inclined to invest into a cryptocurrency because it's a digital asset. They're familiar with it. They've been using the internet for a while now and uh, understand how technology sort of works. Uh, they might not understand or realize or care that uh, you know gold exists and it's a store of value and whatnot. But take a look at this. So Samsung is going to be adding a uh, uh, basically a cryptocurrency into their smartphone so this could be a start of people getting more even more exposed to uh, cryptocurrencies especially bitcoin so a blockchain wallet built into the phone itself every time you scroll through your you know your app drawer on your smartphone you're like oh what is that that's a 
a blockchain wallet, a cryptocurrency wallet, a Bitcoin wallet. That's interesting. You know, I kind of want to maybe look into that. And the last thing I want to cover is this new uh, launch of the backed trading system. So uh, on September 22nd, a product designed to remake Bitcoin as a mainstream investment for the world's investment managers will go live. When ICE Futures US, one of the world's largest commodity markets, open trading at 8 p.m. that day, it will offer backed daily and monthly Bitcoin futures. The first physically delivered cryptocurrency contracts ever traded on a federally regulated exchange. If the exchange works as planned, it will give institutional investors a secure well-monitored place to trade Bitcoin, the world's most widely used cryptocurrency. That, in turn, could help alleviate the problems with volatility and trustworthiness that have kept Bitcoin from being more widely adopted, giving the asset a major boost in legitimacy. So the main problem here with uh, Bitcoin trading on unregulated platforms is people don't really feel safe to trade on those platforms because sometimes the platforms just like disappear and the Bitcoins are gone you know you lose all your money basically so this just gives people that are not you know currently invested in bitcoin a better opportunity and a more a more safe avenue to you know you invest their money in something and they get the bitcoin in return rather than uh paid out in a dollar amount so with the backed futures endowment funds or brokerage firms that trade the contracts will be able to channel their payments and secure a guarantee that their Bitcoin will be delivered through the same ICE clearinghouse that protects settles contracts traded by global oil giants. Now, one issue that a lot of people think is like, but then the more regulation there is with Bitcoin, uh, you know, it's supposed to be decentralized. They're not there isn't supposed to be other you know companies or government controlling this this asset so um but it does kind of make sense that if it is regulated in a certain way without too much regulation it could make it seem or be more safe for the average joe investing in bitcoin so i think this just opens up a whole nother place for people to safely trade uh futures bitcoin futures um so i i kind of like the idea we got to see how it plays out so Let's see what happens on September 22nd, September 23rd. If the Bitcoin price is going to continue to rise, this could be a huge catalyst uh, for it. So we'll see what happens. This is my first video. Hopefully it went well, kind of all over the place, trying to tie it all so it makes sense. I hope I didn't miss anything. Remember, this is not financial advice. Uh, do your own research. There's tons of information on the internet. This is just one place where you could kind of get an idea of what's going on in the world, basically. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Thanks for stopping by and we'll see you in the next one.